Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking my Surly ice cream truck and turning it into a dingle speed. That's right, I said dingle speed, not single speed. So the concept behind dingle speed is it's double single speed. Yeah, I know that might, you might think that defeats the purpose, but the whole theory behind it is that sometimes in a single ride, we might encounter two totally different kinds of terrain where you might need completely different gear ratios. The most easy to explain example would be to imagine that you ride from your home to a trailhead and it's relatively flat. You're in the city. Like I lived in Utah, it's very much a valley and then you immediately hit the bench and it gets really steep. So if you were riding to the trailhead, you would want a taller gear. And then once you got to the trailhead and to those trails that you planned on riding, you're encountering a lot more steep stuff. And so you need a lower gear so that you can spin a little bit more. For me, one of the most frequent places that I ride is essentially seven miles uphill. And then I have seven miles of downhill. The gear that I use for that seven miles of uphill, I need to be pretty low because it's just a long, gradual climb. But when I get to the downhill, I run into a problem of, I basically can't pedal the whole time. In order for dingle speed to work, you really need to have your overall tooth counts pretty close to each other. That makes it so that your chain length can be about the same um, when you swap between the two sets. For my tall gear, I'm gonna be running a 32 tooth chain ring up front with an 18 tooth cog in the back. And then for the low gear, I'm gonna be running a 28 tooth chain ring up front and a 22 tooth cog in the back. 28, 22 is a very low gear ratio. But essentially what I'm doing right now is I want to try out dingle speed because I've never done it. I want to go into it and just test it out right now with what I have. And who knows, maybe I'll love it and I'll invest into it a little bit more and get more optimal gear ratios. But I actually don't think I'm that far off. All right, first thing I'm going to do is just take the chain off, work on getting the derailleur off. Luckily, it's all externally routed, so it's pretty easy. I convert this back and forth between single speed and geared quite a bit. So I ended up zip tying the brake line uh, separately and then um, just have a separate one for the shifter cable. That way I'm not cutting the brake line one off every time. All right, so now we're going to put the 32 tooth chain ring on. Um, like I said, I'm kind of going cheap on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the same bolts for both chain rings. I wouldn't advise this. There is a good chance. I might shear the bolts, but I got longer bolts that will hopefully be strong enough to hold both. And um, this wolf tooth chain ring right here is already spaced. Uh, so I should have enough space between the two to um, fit the chain just fine. I got these bolts on Amazon. They're steel triple inner chain ring bolts. So this isn't really what they're meant for, but they're 10 millimeter, 10 and a half millimeters long. So you can see they're just slightly longer than these, but I think it'll be enough. Hopefully, or else I'm gonna have to track down some longer ones. These also include spacers. So if you are not, um, if you, for some reason you decide to be dangerous like me, uh, you can use a normal two chain rings and use this to space them. Oh yeah, that's got plenty of room, plenty of threads in there. I mean, I do still run a risk of just shearing them off or I guess the, sh the bolt will probably shear before anything, but it's a risk I'm willing to take right now. As you can see right there, that is plenty of room 
for the chain to fit in between those two. So that should work great. It's basically this chain ring already has, uh, I think it's three millimeters of spacing, which is actually what those spacers are that came in the package. So the 32 tooth chain ring I've actually used before for single speed. And to space it correctly, I would have these two spacers, then the cog facing this way, and then this, because this cog is slightly offset. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. So I actually think I'm gonna leave that the same, and then I'm just gonna replace one of these smaller spacers with the other one. I'll bring, probably bring this to the outside. That's about the spacing right there. It's about the same. Um, you could measure it, but I would guess that's close to three millimeters right there. The whole point is you want to really center your chain line and get these pretty close to each other um, just for optimal chain wear and um, so that it's not skipping around or anything like that. Wheel on. chain line. Looks pretty good, I think. I won't really be able to tell that there's a chain on there, but that looks pretty close to me. So some people struggle with running dingle speed because you end up having to obviously, you need basically two good chain lines. And sometimes they'll run into clearance issues. Luckily, since this is a fat bike and I'm running a three inch tire, it's already spaced out wide enough that I can get away with, I have tons and tons of room right there. I could have a super inboard chain ring and not have any clearance issues with the tire. Okay, I have several single speed chains right now. I'm not sure which one's gonna work. But for checking the chain line, that looks pretty amazing. Hmm. Might have a candidate here. Yeah, that one might work. Let's see how it looks in the bigger in the other single speed. Yeah, I think this might be the one. I have to remove a link. That's it. So this one is the best candidate and I am okay with that because I like it the best. It looks I like this color. So Say you're out riding and you're you're in the flats and you need to get to the trailhead. You want a little bit higher of a gear to get there because you also don't want lots of gears because single speed's better. So you put it in here, you'd ride to the trailhead. You get there, all you do is loosen whatever you need to, to uh, loosen the tension, then simply move the chain over. So, I'll drop it on the front, over to that one, then move the rear to the bigger one. Okay, then tension it back up, tighten it, and you're good to go. So that's dingle speed. Ignore that this isn't tensioned yet. I'm trying to decide which one I'm gonna leave it on for now, but I'm excited to go try this out. I've never ridden dingle speed. I've ridden single speed plenty of times, but I've always wished that I had something different because most of my single speed rides aren't rolly or flat or really um, optimal for one gear. I know single speed isn't really optimal anytime, but there's especially times when you're riding like me going up a canyon where you just need to climb for a long time and then you're descending and you would love to be able to pedal on the way down. Um, this will allow me to swap it really quick and ride down and actually be able to pedal. So I'm excited to go try it out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.